pace. Those are the unfortunately. The, uh, by the way, you see here we had a beautiful conversation with you. Yeah, and then we have different faiths. We don't believe what you believe in. You don't believe what we believe. In the same time, we have respectful and productive discussion. Until some people look at this. Until some people who this is those people actually they misrepresent Christianity. This is unfortunate. They misrepresent it because in the hackling, in hackling, when hackling people. Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Salallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah. When on his conquest, because don't forget, before any mosque, mosque in the Middle East. There were Christian, um, Orthodox Christian churches, monasteries, yeah? Yeah, there used to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And communities. Yes. So then the mosque started. So when the, the Prophet, on the conquest, he used to take 20%. No. This is what I learned. Okay. This is what the people tell me. So it's good to help me to learn. So All right. Please teach me. Basically, the Prophet, peace be upon him. Yes. When there is, you need to distinguish between firstly, people embracing Islam and conquering a land, yes. or, or, or let's say, because overtaking a land, and difference between fighting and war booties. Those are two different things. Okay. Some people came under Muslims, like for example, when Jerusalem, yeah. when, they, when they kind of get rid of the Romans, basically, who yeah. used to oppress the Orthodox Christian who lived in Jerusalem yeah. during yeah. for quite some time. Yeah. So what yeah. they have done, they, they had a treaty with the Muslims. Yeah. They literally give them the keys of, of, of Jerusalem, yeah. and they entered without any war. So those people are totally treated differently than people who, who fought. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So the people who, who, who literally came in peace, they were treated in a fair way. That's why Umar al-Khattab, there is called Al-Ahd al which is the treaty of Umar al-Khattab. What he gave to the Christian who lives in, the, in that area, allowing them to practice their faith, not to be oppressed, not to be uh, forced to change their faith, and they are safe, their own churches, their crosses, yes. their whatever, it's stated there clearly. Yes. So they didn't take nothing out of them except what we call it, the, uh, 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 which is called it that the, the jizya. And the jizya is basically is a mount that a non-Muslim Christian or a Jew, or for example, live in a Muslim land, they give what they call it equivalent to one dinar, which is nowadays one dinar, one gold coin, basically. That's what it is. Or depends and, on the situation. And, and we were treated more better from, from the Muslims than from the Crusades. Way more better. Not just that, they don't have, they don't have to fight if there is a, if there is a common enemy, it is the duty for the Muslims to defend them, not just to defend. Yes. They don't have to participate. They don't have to have the police system. They have to have a police to guard them, yeah. to protect them, yeah. to make sure that they are protected. All of these things, all of these things, and as well, they are safe on their own practices, on their own faith, on their lives, etc. This is very, very big and very important. Very Not many important. Christians know this. Not many Christians know this. Be, be, uh, yeah, uh, they don't know this. Be, this is yeah. the background. This is how, the, this is what it means. And the people, they think the jizya, that tax, they think, oh, they're taking all our money. Actually, the, the Muslims, that they pay way more than this towards zakat. Even this jizya, which the, which the non-Muslims gives, which is, as I mentioned, is like one single golden coin. Yeah. For the whole for the whole year, for example, or for the whole certain area, uh, era. Now, in return, he doesn't need basically just like what we hear. We pay, for example, in this country, we pay twenty, we pay yeah. nearly forty percent tax yeah. in this country, in yeah. UK, more. yeah, and more. Yeah, they said maximum forty percent tax, and they say they say for policing, for guarding, for all of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, the Christian, they don't have to pay except this amount. Yeah. And they have nothing to do paying the cat. They have nothing to do to, to give for the poor and the needy ones. And as well, in return, that's what they get. And in return, if one of them is poor and unable to pay, for example, then they are exempted from paying it. And on top of this, adding to this, and if they are, and if they are poor and in need, they are entitled to have access to get zakat money, which is the Muslims pay towards the poor and the need one, they will be given. And during the time of Umar, this particular khalif, that there is a Jew man lived in Medina, or lived in, in the Arab Peninsula, and this Jew man, he was poor. 
And then he came to Umar al-Khattab, he said, I have nothing. Then Umar al-Khattab, he literally take, took from the money of the zakat, which is the zakat, which is, which is a money that we pay 2.5% as a mission to, to, the, to, the, to the poor. And then he was deducted and he was given actually from, from, the, from the money that the Muslims participate. So all these things, it tells you how the, how the Christian were, how the Muslims treated them and how the Christian were treated yes. during the Islamic, during the right Islamic time. That's why I don't, I, do, I don't advise, especially people who are Orthodox like yourself, yeah. to judge Islam based on, towards the end of the Ottoman Empire. Yes. Towards the end of the Ottoman Empire, there are certain practices, yeah. certain things which is non-Islamic. Okay. That including as well us, towards us, even Muslims, uh, Arabs, for example, you, the, towards the end of the time of the, the Islamic, when there is a, a, some kind of, uh, when actually Zionists kind of penetrated, to, you know, in that, uh, you know, in the, you know, in the, in the Ottoman, in the Ottoman system, you could say. Uh, and then what they have, what they have started, they started as well. Uh, imposing actually the Turkish language on the, on the Arab speakers and, and you know uh, to that extent that's why we had the, uh, the Arab revolution which they had when they revolted against the Ottomans based on the things based on too many things too many factors that happens so the point is what you, if you are oppressed by the Ottomans you I mean, towards us. If you are oppressed by you yeah, can't judge Islam. And as well, Muslims who are born Muslims, as I mentioned to you, my name is Muhammad Zahir Muhammad Fayyad Muhammad. This is my great grandfather. He was literally executed by the Ottomans. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't do nothing, just only for his. I, I don't know what he has done. Even they said, they said he may be, may be even a threat. Even he didn't do nothing, but he was someone who was a uh, person who people used to refer to him, people used to respect him, and he used to d dislike oppression that's happening. So what they have done, they came and they, they killed him. And adding to this as well, it, it happens that, especially in my town, which is called Karak, uh, and uh, which is my, my, my city in, in Jordan, what happened, what the Ottoman has done, there is uh, uh, someone who escaped from the Ottoman and came to Karak, refuge, a Palestinian person came, and then he was protected by one of the sheikhs, one of the leaders of the tribes. Yeah. And the whole Karak tribes, they get together to support that. They said, you cannot take, he came, uh, he, he, he came to our place, we give him the refuge. What they have done, what the Ottoman has done, some of the leaders of the Ottoman, the armies, they kidnapped two of his sons, they burned them alive. How many years ago? This? No, we're talking about in the beginning of the of this of the last century. We're oh. talking about you know you could say we call it 190, uh, which is 1908, 1910 uh, during that time. Yes. Which means this is towards these are things, yeah, yeah. you know, which is between that time until the the 19 uh, 1916, when the Arab Revolution happens. During that time, there is a lot of oppression happens towards even Muslims, towards Arabs. So oh. these things. But in the same time, we, we don't say this is Islam. We say those are the practices of okay. the late Ottomans, not the early Ottomans, okay. the late Ottomans. Yeah. Okay, do good. Yes, That's good you clarified. But my question is like, originally, like when I hear yeah. your Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Now, he now, was getting 20% yeah. on his conquest. And he would now, now, as I mentioned to you, if people, if, if people, if people. Can you clarify this? I will, I will clarify, yeah. Please. Yeah, uh, now here, if people, for example, one of the things, firstly, the way that the Prophet, peace be upon him, dealt with people, firstly, to give da'wah, calling people to Islam. If they accept, that's their choice. If they don't accept, that's their choice. Yeah? Yeah. Now, the second thing, that's why he used to send letters to the leaders of the countries, or the leaders of these. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he sent the letter to the Byzantine yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. uh, Caesar. He sent a letter to the, uh, to the Kisra Khusro, which is the leader of the Persian. So he used to send letters to yeah, them, yeah. calling them to Islam. And they said, if you don't want to accept Islam, it's fine. Allow people, allow your people to know what is, what is Islam. Just allow them. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to accept Islam, that's fair enough. It's up to you. But just allow, which is the Prophet, there is one, one saying, he said, Khallu baini wa baini nas. Mean, leave between me and the people. I need to speak to them. If you don't want, that's fine. Yeah. It is the right of the people to hear about Islam. It's yes. their right. Yes. What they will do, instead what they have done, they have killed the messengers that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi sent. Yes. So what they have done, this is an act of, of war, violence. of yes. violence. Yes. So the response is, has to be with violence. That's how it is if yes. there is a strength. Yes. So they responded by fighting them. Now, if they won the battle, this call war booties. They will be taken from the armies, etc., and whatever wealth that they give. Yes. Now this wealth, it will be distributed to the Muslims. Yes. There is 20% of this. It goes to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family. 
because he, the Prophet, he cannot take charity. Yeah. It's not permissible for him to access to charity. Unlike any other Muslim, yeah. for example, if someone poor and needy, yeah. that they are entitled to access for charities, for the, for the, for the, for the zakat. Mm -hmm. The Prophet, peace be upon him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, what's this? What, what, do you, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing? Stop involved. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Yes. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, yeah, doesn't, he's not, is not permissible to, to get charity. So he cannot get charity like others. And as well he, peace be upon him, he doesn't take as well any type of sadaqa or any type of charity. He cannot have all, all of these things. He cannot as well take from the wealth of the people. So Allah Azzawajal has said, this will be deducted towards his, for him and his, and his family and the way that he liked to spend. Yeah, yeah. So what he used to do, peace be upon him, with this amount, he used to give it out as well. Even though that's why he, towards the end of his life, for example, think about it. Someone who, for example, was victorious to, in many wars, he should have big wealth, yeah? yeah, yeah he yeah. died, yeah, yeah. he had only around 12, 12 dirhams, which is 12 silver coins. That's all what he has. That's all what he owns, the Prophet had. And he said to his wife, he said, give it out, I don't want to meet Allah having a single penny with me. Yeah. So he, she gave it out while he was alive. That shows that he was literally giving it out. And there is one companion said, a man came to him and the Prophet, he had, he had some wealth, he said, do you see that valley, that full of cattle, whatever? He said, he said that's yours. And then the, he went to his people and he said, oh, my people believe in Muhammad because he gives, he sees someone gives, he's so generous, he gives as if he is not afraid of poverty. So that shows he was giving it to the poor and then he does it. Okay, so, okay, thank you. It's good clarification, this. Yeah. But it's just a quick one. To, to, yeah. So really, the Prophet would go on the conquest. He asked, just let the people I want to show to see, learn about Islam, the Quran, and the Islam. Islam. Yeah, if they say no, that's total up to them, then he would leave. Yes, but only, only this is very important, only when they do violence to him, they will go and then he will exactly. Take that's this is very important. That's exactly, and that's if you see that the whole wars of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was basically, was a response of the violence. Now, is this though, this is very important question. That's, that's how it is. Better you don't answer if you don't want to. No, I, I will but answer. Are you saying that all the conquest, this is how it happened, or there were sometimes conquests where he, they no, would go I, I'm talking about, about I'm talking about the Prophet. Now, later on, there are certain times after the time of the Prophet, yes. there are certain people that are not infallible. Yeah, they so, go, they things go. happens. Yeah. Things happen in, in, a, in a wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Like for example, there is one incident during the same Khalifa Umar al-Khattab, during his time, yeah. that the war, basically the Muslim leader, the, Muslim, the army leader, what he did when he was fighting, yeah, yeah. He, he conquered that land and he said, we're still strong, let's go to the next town. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they went to the next town. Yeah, yeah. Without, without giving them warning, without telling them what is it, they just entered. And without, no, without giving them opportunity, without giving them opportunity to, to learn, to learn anything, the, the anything. And then when they entered, what they have done... This is wrong. This yeah, this is, this is what they have done. So they wrote, oh, good, yeah, they wrote a letter to the Khalif, yes. to the Khalifa. They said to him, your army came to us, entered our land, entered our town. They didn't give us, you know, the opportunity to learn about Islam. They didn't give us warning. They just entered and they conquered our land. What he has done, he sent the letter to the leader, you have to pull out because you did it in a wrong way. Yes. So the leader, when the army leader came, can you imagine, he's already took over the city. Yeah, yeah. What he has done, he obeyed the, the, the Khalifa Abu Khattab and he pulled out the whole army, the whole army pulled out from the town. Yeah, yeah. They said, now, we're sorry, we went, we are out now. Now at this time, we are telling you, this is Islam. Do you want to hear about Islam? Do you want to do this? Then that town, they said, a religion like this, a faith like this, the people are devoted. It's not about politics. It's not about you know wealth. It's not about conquest. It's about faith. We prefer to enter your faith. So they entered the faith of Islam. The point is, this is how it was. This is how it should be. Yes. Now, of course, there are certain conquests which wasn't which done correctly. It wasn't. Cor it wasn't done correctly, yeah, yeah. including sorry, sorry. no, no worries. Sorry. Including what happened by some of the Ottomans as well expansion 
towards certain areas. That's these things again, you know, not necessarily is, is, the, is the right thing. And the same thing as well in some other, not just only Ottoman, and others as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. who were, who rules as well, like Mamalik, Mamluks, and other. Yeah. There are certain things that happens in a wrong way. Yes. But it's, which is again, we don't justify. We don't say. We don't say yeah, but because we say it's wrong. The wrong we say it's wrong. So, so when the prophet went, give you the opportunity. If they didn't want to know, he would go. He wouldn't do nothing. Basically, how, this is how it is. Only if they do violence on him. You see here that these are. They will be given. Yeah, they will be given options. Firstly, okay, now here, the prophet peace be upon him. There is one of the tribes of the Arab tribes. Uh, what they have done, they said, okay, we don't want to accept Islam. Yeah, yeah. But then he offered the treaty, like okay, because the people here, at that time they didn't have what you call it United Nations, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So which means if there is an if there is an area, we don't want okay. Let's be then, then let's have a treaty. Let's be friends yeah. rather than to be enemies because we don't know. So at least we should have a treaty. Okay, you don't want to accept Islam. It's fine. So then let's have a treaty. That's exactly what happened to the to the with, even with the, the Christian Orthodox. In, in, in Abyssinia, yeah, yeah. after the time of the, uh, the, the their leader, after the time of Ashama, radiyallahu anhu, he's one of the, he was the one who believed, became a Muslim later on, uh, you know. But later on, after, after his, his successor, basically had a treaty with Muslims, yeah. and then they said, okay, the treaty is basically, we are safe, we are safe from us, we are safe from you, we don't attack you, you don't attack us, and that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. We live in peace, we trade. No problem. You could, we could communicate. Your people could come to our land. We could go to your land, and that's how it is. So then, in that case, this is the, what we call it the treaty. You, you understand? So that is the way. That's the way. Because otherwise, if at that time, if you are not my friend, that means you are your enemy. That's Thank why. You for clarifying. You see. <laughs> All right. I, first of all, we have what, good respect for conversation. Yes, I, and I'm not 100 percent knowledgeable, but you clarify good points. I ask Allah and first we to accept more discussion. We, we wanted this, and I wanted to show this is the the bright the bright the, this is the bright side of Islam, which many people they don't know. People they think yeah. people they think Islam is violence. Islam is those. Yeah. But actually, if you see that the Prophet peace be upon him, he had the chance where the angel of the angel of the angel of mountain came to him. When people of his own people re retaliated against him, when his own people tortured him, killed his companion, they said, we are now, we could collapse the whole two mountains and then destroy them. He said, no, I wish Allah bring from uh, their offspring people who are worshipping Allah. So mercy, that's what it is. Next time, I will give you more questions. And you ask me as well, yeah? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And, uh, can I ask you one question? Now here. Anything you want to All right, good. So I you said... Know everything, huh? Okay. Now here, you said you are Orthodox Christian. By the way, I respect the Orthodox Christian more than the Catholics and the others. So at least they have some kind of... Uh, huh? The question is, now you see, I read the Bible. And, and in the Bible, I didn't see a clear statement from Jesus, peace be upon him, indicating... Yeah, yeah, one more, last one. Now. Yeah? Thank you. There is no single sta uh, clear statement, not vague statement, a clear statement saying that the people to worship him. Okay. Correct. Yeah. But what is the point though? What, what are you getting at? Because he didn't say, what does that mean? All right. All right. Let me tell you something. I believe God is good. Yeah? Yes. And since God is good, God wants the guidance for us. God doesn't want us to be misguided. He wanted us to be guided. Yes. So if God wanted us to be guided, will give us clear things that any someone who is a shepherd in, 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 uh, or a fisherman in Cyprus doesn't have much knowledge, whatever, just open the Bible, will know what God wants from him. Or someone who is a shepherd from my country, open the Bible, know what it is. So the point is because God is good, God wants the guidance for us. So there have to be a clear statement. Like you know, in the Old Testament, God is saying, don't worship anyone beside me because I'm a jealous God. Yes. So a clear statement, do not worship anyone else. Don't worship anyone beside me. No God beside me except me because he is jealous. He doesn't like someone to be worship. He doesn't like anyone to worship another person with him or another uh, you know, de de deity with him. So that's a, this is a clear statement. Yes. Yeah. The issue is when it comes to Jesus, we don't have a clear statement. You don't have a clear statement. How is that? How does that okay. make sense now? So, in the Bible, Jesus, 
did not say, he doesn't say, worship me. Yes. So, why the Christians worship me? That's the question which the Christian has to answer, not me. Well, it's so clear after when the prophecies were fulfilled from the Old Testament, the New Testament. Don't forget, like you said, in the villages, they're just shepherds. They're not clever. Yes. Yes. Then when the crucifixion... They may be clever, but not educated. No, yeah. yeah. And then uh, you have the crucifixion, you have uh, the resurrection, you have all these things happen. The people, all of a sudden, the disciples, they die martyrs death after the crucifixion. Something happened. That's why they worship him. So they worship him because they look and they realize, look at the Old Testament prophecies, like in Daniel, where he's going to be born. How is going to be born? Yes, yes, when fine, but that's uh, about, about so, they're talking about the Messiah. The Messiah in the Old Testament, it's not a divine. You know, if you read yeah. the, the Messiah in the Old Testament, it's not a divine, it's a man, it's a human being. Yeah. So that's why yeah. we believe Jesus Christ to be a Messiah. Yeah. But that doesn't make him a divine, doesn't make him God. Well, you see here in the Old Testament, you don't find there is any, any, any kind of endorsing the idea of worshipping the Messiah. Actually, the, uh, the idea is to respect the Messiah, to follow the Messiah, but none of the statement to say worship the Messiah. Exactly. Because the God represented the Messiah yeah. as a savior, someone to come to save the people, someone to come the, to be followed. He's a human being. So in the Old Testament, there is nothing, uh, nothing kind of, you know, enticing exactly. worshiping the Messiah. Exactly. But then what happens is the revelation, progressive re revelation in the New Testament, he fulfilled and you could see he's more than just like a, a human being. Look, when he was born, the Magi, they came from Iran or whatever they came. Yeah. They came there, they worshipped the baby. They bowed down, they worshipped him. Again, this doesn't indicate any... You see, why, we need... Though? We need... Why? They were wise men. Let, let, they were wise. Let they me tell you something. Fishermen. You know, I will tell you something, yeah? You know, when you read the Bible, you know that the Bible was kind of compiled in totality yep. 300, you know, uh, AC, correct? Uh, but... One second. Yeah, am I right? Yes. Which is after the Council of Nicaea. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, okay, this is very... You're digging very deep now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am digging it's very deep. very complex. It's very big, this thing. First of all, the Orthodox Christians. We have the holy tradition. Not the tradition of just man, but the holy tradition. We had the, the sayings. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. So just like uh, the Muslim, they, they know the Quran. You can... Some Muslims, they can, without the Quran, they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. memorize the they, Quran. Yeah. They had we the have 15 sayings. million Muslims who memorize the Quran. Yeah, yeah. No so well, they had the sayings and the holy tradition. So from there, the people knew everything before the books were compiled. Like the you, early church fathers, 150 years before. But, 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 the, the, but the early church fathers, you, you don't find in 300 years, there is no single early church father believed in Trinity for 300 years. Stop there. Yes. I promise you, I have the answer for you. Okay, good. Because I, I wanted... 150 years after Christ, they believe in... Bina one second. They believe, they call, they believe in binary, binaryity or binary, basically two, two gods, basically. No. They don't believe in the Trinity. I will tell you something. That's why they had to vote. You need, uh, uh, you know, you need to understand. Sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. The early church fathers, yeah, yeah. from from the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, yes. until the Council of Nicaea, yeah. you don't find from the early church fathers Trinity. one believes in the Trinity as it is. It was voted for in the Council of Nicaea. Yeah. People get together, they have to vote and think about it. A doctoring, which is, should be a divine doctoring to be voted for, how come? That means there's still people in that council who believes, who are monotheists, who attended the Council of Nicaea. Some of them didn't even accept Constantine. Yeah, carry on, carry yeah. On. Some, of, some of them didn't accept Constantine. Yeah. And some of them, they, they were, you know, they were uni, uh, the Unitarian, let's say, 
or, or monotheist. Some of them, they were, you know, binarian. For example, they believe in they believe in, 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 in uh, the father and the you son. Had splits, you had yeah. this. And as well, then it was introduced the Trinity. So the, the, the idea is when we are going back, when we trace back the doctrine of Christianity, there is a serious issue actually when you are using it to use the Bible and to use the to use all these things to, to indicate that this is something came from God. You see here, if it's if it's from God, it has to be protected and preserved. It should be clear. So how come one of the early church fathers who are Unitarian who believe in one God? How come if it's clear, if it, if it was clear as you mentioned, you said it's clear, everyone memorized. Actually, no. If it was clear, you didn't find some people who are Unitarian. You don't find some people who are Danielian, who believe in two, multiple two, two gods, which is the father and the son. You don't find people, the vaguity and the ambiguity is so, so, so clear there for the people they had to vote for it. Do you, do you see the point? Yeah, yeah, but no. So you are saying the Trinity was introduced 300 years after uh, the Council of Nice. I am saying, there is, I'm saying, I'm saying you don't find in the first 300 years. Okay. One of the early church fathers believes in the Trinity. Even Paul was was binary. In fact, even Paul, okay. even Paul, his letters, Paul believes in the uh, believes in the Father and the Son. They didn't believe the Holy Ghost to be uh, part of this. The Trinity. This, honestly, if you want to know, there is a list of so many church fathers. We believe the Trinity was believed right at the very beginning after Christ. And uh, because many uh, corrupt teachings were coming in, they had to have the Council of Nicaea to clear and to protect the teaching. Now, it's very easy, Islam versus Judaism versus Protestants versus Orthodoxy, a, a question of art. Uh, J. Dyer, J. Dyer, D-Y-E-R, if you go on there, okay. on... Um, no, no, why we go there? What, listen, I come, I don't, my on Spotify, he addresses the Trinity from early it's, church fathers no, before no, 150 years. Actually, I will suggest to you, there is, as well, there is a brother, a Rivet brother, his name is Paul Williams, as well. Yeah. He's one of the brothers who attend here. And, and Jazallah Khamelar wrote him, he actually traced back most of the things. And he, there is a good work that you could say, I think um, uh, it's called uh, vlog. What's called it? Monotheist. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, just put Paul Williams. I forget his uh, his his channel. And actually, he's one of those ones. I don't. I think he's here. I think he's here. Brother, can you call me Paul? He's there. Jabi, can you call me Paul there? Paul, he's there. Paul Williams. Yeah, Paul Williams. Paul. Paul. One second, yeah? Take your time, sir. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting discussion because I, I love to have, you know, this discussion. Yeah. This brother, Paul, come. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum, brother Paul. How are you? You're right? Like, how are you? You okay? You okay? Yeah. Uh, I, I forget your name. I forget your name. George. 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 Uh, brother George, actually, he is an Orthodox yes, Christian. I know. Yeah, and and actually, he's very respectful, and I I, I like I like no, his discussion. He, he will never be very respectful. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and we had a beautiful discussion about the history, some of the things that happens by the Ottomans and things like that, and as well the impact of the on, on Islam in general. And he, he asked a few questions about even the, you know, the hummus, which is the 20% the for the Prophet and his family. And then we came to the point, he said, ask me about Christianity. I said, to him, okay, I didn't find, for example, I said, if we, if God is good, yeah, and God is, uh, wanted the guidance, God wanted the guidance for us. That means God has to make a clear statement, not, not you know, confusion. You're not confused, it doesn't cause confusion, not, um, not vague, not um, without ambiguity, just like to say, don't worship no one beside me because I'm a jealous God. So yeah. it shows clear statement, not associated with God partners, and this, this is a very clear statement. When it comes to the Jesus to be a God, now here you will find a lot of vagueness, a lot of ambiguity, you don't know what it is. And then he said, this kind of went in the early church fathers were talking about it. Then I came to the point to say, I know from my understanding, in the first 300 years, none of the, or none of the early church fathers believed in the Trinity as it is nowadays, in the, until the Council of Nasir, from my understanding. Okay. 
you correct me if I am if I'm wrong. I know Paul, for example, was endorsing the idea of the father, the son. But but as the structure, the way that it is, they had to vote for it in the Council of Nasia. You you are more aware of this than me, so that's why I want to. That's why I ask you. Please, to do that. Paul, if I may ask you, um, you had the debate. So his the question was. Was one of the church, church fathers, fathers didn't believe? B did they believe in the Trinity? Three hundred years after Christ, but you, he, he debated Jadaya. Yeah. And uh, he did say he did. If you watch Jadaya, he did say at least one hundred and fifty years after Christ, the very very late church fathers they were mentioned and they were talking about Trinity at that time. I think it's a really complicated academic subject. So yeah. carry on. And I love that when they come. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Already I'm interrupting you. So no, no. Yeah. Uh, this is a complicated academic subject. Why? Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was at university studying. Yeah, I remember when I was at university. No worries. It's just that it's a little bit too much. It's 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 too much. I believe you have to be the rule of this, right? You have the rule of this. Like you will do, Muslim. And I'm here to ask you a question. So you can see the phone in your way. Time. Yes. And you see different Christians disagreeing with different bits. So yes. the Ebionites, the early Jewish Christians, who did not believe Jesus was even divine at all. Correct. They believed he was a prophet, that he was a messiah. They believed pretty much what Muslims believe. Mm -hmm. People like James, Jesus' brother, who headed up the church in Jerusalem, he was a very Jewish uh, follower of Jesus who followed uh, the law. He, he, he obeyed the Torah. Uh, he didn't believe Jesus was God. Um, but there are other people like Ignatius of Antioch, towards the end of the first century, a church father, uh, the Orthodox Church still reveres him. He so does call Ignatius of Antioch. Yeah. He was yeah. a bishop in Antioch. He, we have seven of his letters still today, extant, authentic by scholars. And he, he does actually call Jesus God. Now this is, he died in 107 or 109 AD. So that there were other people, Gentiles, who did call Jesus God. So the church, there were many different kind of Christologies yeah. and understandings yeah. of God. As Bart Ehrman has brilliantly said, you know, some Christians believed in one God, some people believed in two. The Marcionites yeah. believed that there was two gods, the God of the Old Testament who was wrathful, vengeful, unloving, but the God of Jesus who was loving, the God we want to follow. There's two gods. Then you have the Gnostic Christians who believed in hundreds of gods uh, and so on. So they're all over the shop. People who call themselves Christians were all over the shop about all sorts of things. You compare that with Islam from the beginning, a clear statement of belief in the clear. oneness of yes. God, Tawheed, not associated with one. And that in my view, is what history tells us Jesus himself believes. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said... Love your God. What, what did he, no, no, no. Love your... Love, well, no, no, he didn't say that. He said, he, he quoted the Shema in Deuteronomy. Yeah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is... Now, the word in Hebrew is Ehad, and the word in Arabic is... Ahad. Ahad. It's the same word. Jesus literally quoting the word we find in the Quran that's through 112. Ahad. Say you. Allah is one. This is a clear chapter in the Quran called Surah Al-Ikhlas, which means the chapter of sincerity and devotion, means say Allah is one and unique, Ahad. This is such an important point because Moses said that in Deuteronomy, Jesus said that in the, even in the Gospel of Mark, and then Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, so, uh, um, was revealed exactly the same words in the in the Quran. Isn't that a coincidence? Not really, because they were all sent by God. Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. It's the same religion, basically. But later on, in the Gentile Christian world, you start having three or two or three uh, divinities. So the, the Father is divine, fully God. The Son is fully God. The Holy Spirit is fully God. 
My math ain't great, but that's not Tawheed. That's not what Jesus or Moses or Muhammad, peace be upon them, oh, preached. Oh. So I think if you want to follow Jesus today, you need to follow Islam. It's the only religion in the world that follows Jesus correctly. Jews deny him, shamefully. Yes. Christians worship him, shamefully, committing idolatry. Muslims get it just about right. He was sent by God, a prophet. And that's why we should follow him and all the prophets yeah. of God. Thank so that's you. why Islam matters, because it continues, continues the same message of Jesus and Moses faithfully today. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. That's good. So what, the way I look at it is yeah. this. So, okay, getting back to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you're saying, even 107 years after Christ, some believed he's God, yeah. some believed the Trinity, some didn't believe the Trinity. Yes, yeah. not it's a, a complex thing. Yeah, it's so a complex Paul, thing. you're it right. Is, so Paul's right. So then you go on to say about when Jesus said God is one. Okay. But you've just picked something out there. But there's so many questions in the Bible that if you look at them, then you think, well, hang on, what about when he said the Father and I are one? For example, I'm just brushing over a few things. Yes. What about why did the Jews pick up this when pick up the stone and, uh, to throw him? Because he was blaspheming. It's for blasphemy. Why didn't he, why didn't Jesus correct him when uh, Tom, Thomas said, my Lord, my God? Why did the Magi, the wise men, the three wise men, worship the what worship the baby when it was, yeah see so there's so many other things and then you've got prophecies about he will be called Emmanuel he will be born of a virgin and all these other things and, and we can get so you are right it can get very complicated and you can pick things you can pick things I can pick things and then we're all like this and then you've got confusion what you're saying now, I will tell you something you, you know the, the confusion is Instead of quoting just only one single, for example, sentence, let's see the context. What you mentioned about, for example, come and worship him, rather than they bowed and prostrate to him. And actually, that's something it was done to some other people, not just only to Jesus, peace be upon him. The, for example, to Joseph, the brothers, the brothers of Joseph, they, they later prostrated to him. Yeah? Which means, doesn't mean they worshipped him. That was something an act they used to do act out of respect or honouring, etc. But this doesn't mean worship. So that's what we need to distinguish between uh, the act of respect by certain people. That's why in Islam demolished this actually in Islam. So a man came to prostrate to the Prophet peace be upon him. And he said, why did you do that? He said, I found the Christian and the Jews, they, they, they prostrate to their leaders, etc. And I see you that you are worth it to be, to be prostrated to. He said, no, don't prostrate to no one but Allah. That shows to cut, for example, the, you know, the misconception about worshipping a person. So the point is, people prostrating Jesus doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that he was God. That's one thing. That's a response to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as well, even the, with the, the verse that he has quoted, what was the context? For example, the mention, oh, you Israel, our Lord Father is one, or our, our God is one. When uh, the context, because at that time, and correct me if I'm wrong as well, at that time people, they say, they have this kind of, again, vagueness, who is this person? And people, maybe there could be rumors that maybe he claimed to be God, maybe he claimed to be this. So he, he cut the whole route to it. He said, our, our, our God is one. So he, he mentioned clearly, he didn't say I'm part of it. Otherwise, he, he had the chance to say it clearly to the people. And then we have no, no, no misunderstanding about it. Am I right? Look at like a verse, for example. So we're picking verses now. Some in context, some not in context. You get into a hole. It can cause yeah. When you fast for 40 days and uh, shaitan yeah. tried to tempt him, yeah. what did Jesus say to him? Okay. Jesus said to him, do not tempt God. Do not contempt. Yeah, you would know the verse, anyway. what would yeah. it say exactly? Uh, well, there, there are two versions, one in Matthew, one in Luke, and we need to get the Greek out and look at it. They're not identical, so yeah. uh, we're just paraphrasing from memory from English. Yeah. We need to be careful. Which is not, yeah, but we need to be careful. I, I, we think can't... You, I think you make an important point about cherry picking and getting it uh, yeah, and, and looking at the context. And, and this is where, just I, gonna I, get into a this thing. where I think uh, biblical criticism, New Testament scholarship is very helpful. I, I found it very beneficial yeah, in yeah, my yeah. study of, yeah, of the yeah, New yeah. Testament. And one, one of the great discoveries in the last hundred years or so has been a very profound observation that the Gospels uh, copy from each other. And you can see that at the level of the Greek, particularly How Matthew... How do you prove that they copy from each other? Well, Matthew, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, Mark and, uh, and, and, and Luke. Uh, because at the level of Greek, you can see that the Greek is identical. 
even in incidental uh, commentary rather than just the words of Jesus. Yes. So the, the, the consensus of all the scholars, Oxford, Cambridge, Harvey, wherever you go, all is, of it, is, is the same, um, is, is that there is copying going on. And the view, the most common is that uh, copy Can you prove that? So historians have concluded, and most of these historians are Christians, and I can name names. Are they, are they, sorry to interrupt you, are they, what Christian, are they? A Christian historian. Western, this is a trans-denominational, this is a, a cross-denominational thing. It's not a denominational thing okay, anymore on, because there's an agreed understanding, a consensus, okay. Ichma, on these issues. Yeah. Yeah. And what do they, they realise? Well, Mark being the earliest, it's interesting you can see how, nevertheless, Matthew and Luke change Mark uh, in subtle ways, sometimes to elevate Jesus' status uh, and to give him titles and, and, and sayings which are not found earlier. And one of my favourite examples, a very well-known example, you might, you might have heard it before, in the earliest gospel, a man comes to Jesus, it's chapter 10, verse 17 and 18 of Mark's gospel. Mark, yeah. The earliest gospel. A man comes to Jesus and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah. Jesus says, why do you ask me about, why do you ask, why do you call me good? Sorry, yeah. why do you call me good? There is no one good but God alone. Yes. And then he says, obey the commandments. Yes. Now here, and, and, and here, um, according to, according to uh, many interpreters, and it's my view as well, Jesus denying yeah. any divinity. Lies. Well, why do you call me good? There's in no the one good but God. But so God. Listen, you shouldn't be interrupting. So what happens now is you had that in Mark, very clearly stated. Jesus, in my view, denying his divinity. But in Matthew's version, his hackle and just hackle here. What does Mark very first chapter say? Okay, yeah. Matthew, Matthew then changes the word. If you look at Matthew's version of the same event, the same story. This guy's lying. So you have to correct him. Matthew yeah, changes. Sure. So okay. Tell me. Tell me. That's fine. Uh, All right. Matthew changes the words of Jesus very subtly to remove well, that, remove the embarrassment, uh, uh, apparent embarrassment of his denial. He's God or divine. I see. So in Matthew's version, in Matthew, I think it's 19. Jesus, a man comes to Jesus and says, "Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal?" The same question. Yeah. In Matthew, same event. Jesus yeah. says, "Why do you ask me about what is? Good? There's no one good but God alone." So instead of denying his divinity in the earlier gospel, in Matthew, uh, he, no, uh, he, he uh, avo exactly. avoids that in issue entirely and, and he's not denying his divinity. Now, there are many examples of the later gospels changing the earlier gospel for their own purposes. So in Mark, Jesus is not a Torah observant Jew. He says the food laws have been abrogated, yes. you can eat pork basically. Oh, yeah. But in, Ma in Matthew, he, 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 corrects, in Mark? he corrects Mark and has Jesus teaching Torah observance to all disciples, be they Jew or Gentile. Well, but, that's not but, true. But, but then in John, I haven't got to John yet, John, yeah. you have a very different kind of gospel from the other three. There, Jesus comes from another world, he comes from heaven, he's a divine son, he comes into the world, he is in, incarnate, and the word became flesh in, one, in John chapter 1, verse 14, I think. And he is divine in some sense. So if you look at the whole the whole timeline, the earliest gospel of Mark, Jesus denying he is God, saying there is that, that, that uh, echoing the Shema yeah. of Deuteronomy, which is found in the Quran itself. So are you done with the script, Paul? And then to John, where you have the exalted Jesus, who, who, who is divine. So how do you explain this? Simple. Well, okay. in 99%, and I, I remember um, E.P. Sanders, the great American Was Jesus scholar, writing about this. Um, he said that 99% uh, that of biblical scholars in the last 200 years have concluded the following, that John's gospel represents a highly interpreted, highly developed account about Jesus. You have to prove that. Uh, uh, well, you and and this, to that extent, it's not historical. 
compared to the much earlier Jesus tradition found in Mark and Q and elsewhere, where we have the much more historical more Jesus. Kismo, by the way, and in the theory. early tradition, Jesus is not divine. He is divine. He, de so, he denies he is divine in Mark gospel, chapter 10. Right, so right. When, 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 says, you, when you quote those passages the in John's gospel, they're there, but they are highly interpreted accounts that is not, according to the experts, it's not really historical. And that's how I I benefited enormously from New Testament studies in that regard. Now, you may reject biblical scholarship. Some Christians do. I don't. I think there's many useful tools and skills and, and, and conclusions one can benefit from. And, 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 and many Christians accept biblical scholarship in the churches, in the Church of England, the Catholic Church, even some in the Orthodox churches do accept biblical okay. scholarship. Well, thank you. The thing you is, see here. Oh, they're both out now, aren't they? Wow. You see here, by the way, by the way, I just wanted to mention this. This is, by the way, that is how generally what we face. Those are the, unfortunately, the, by the way, you see here, we had a beautiful conversation with you. We have different faiths. We don't believe what you believe in. You don't believe what we believe. In the same time, we have respectful and productive discussion. Until some people, look at this, until some people, who, this is those people actually they misrepresent Christianity. This is unfortunate. They misrepresent it because in the hackling, in hackling, when hackling people, hackling people, saying all these rude things, doing all of these things that tells you how they are. This, that's their behavior, and that's the problem. And that is the problem. And actually, those people they are, and, and that makes actually many people actually to even to reject part of the things people rejecting Christianity. Look at this. You see. Here? The That's not the way of having a, 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 is a, a, so a few months we just want to the Quran is preaching that Christ is divine. So now okay. we'll go, please. <laughs> So, uh, Please, one second, uh, so well, on, this, on, on the subject, I mean, uh, do you accept an historical investigation of the, no. of the, of the gospel? You've run through a well, script. Well, do, do, do you, or, or do you reject that yes, in I the do. sense of, well, I've just seen them as the word of God, they're fallible, yeah. but not to look at them historically? No. Okay. So, what, as an Orthodox Christian, yeah. We go straight to the source of who put them books together. The, the teachings of the Christianity was brought up by a community of people. Yep. Oral traditions, mm -hmm. very important. That oral tradition it weren't just just like and not no you, not in one location. Just just Across like the, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, the yeah, Muslim yeah, would yeah, know yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the Quran off by heart and yeah. recite it. But the, the, the Christians, they, they could do, uh, yeah. that, like, that's why Jesus spoke in parables. Yeah. So the community grew. So from there, that group, before the Bible was put together, they had beliefs and they knew what they knew. Yes. So now, when we come to all this, well, what you're saying, and you're right, there are, no, he's not right. There are contradictions he's not right. in, the, no, no, in, no, no, no. in interpretations of he's the Bible, right. the English version, the James version, the new... Uh, uh, NIV and all this, they, they, they do, and there's a feminist Bible, there's so much, all this. So, where do, I, where do <laughs> we get out and how do we interpret, for example, when you hit on that verse, for example, one of the verses, like when Jesus said, Oh, uh, why do you call me good? There's why no do you good. call me good? Yeah, there's only yeah. one is God. Yeah. So, it's how you interpret it and how. Yeah. Probably Western scholars interpret it. It's, it's, not, it's very. It's not Western scholars. These are all, all, like all scholars. But look, but yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we yeah, go they're, by. They're, they're not. It's not we, British people who are saying yeah, this. They, we, these are Christian scholars throughout the world. Yeah, but we okay. go. Even we go. My, 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 or Romania. We go straight okay. to the source that was brought down by the by the bishops from the church history. Right from the time, how was these things interpreted? The, the, the question is, I, I hear what you're saying, and from orth what you're so saying we know is very truth. orthodox. And I, I, yeah. I, that is an authentically orthodox. Uh, and we go by the Koine Greek. I, I get Greek. that. But, yeah. the, the, but the Koine Greek, excellent. But this is the, the common Greek of the time, which the yeah. Gospels are written in. Yeah. But that's the point. If you look at the detail, and you look at the, when once you see that in there Greek. is a literary dependence in the Greek, I mm. someone's copying from someone else, and then you see the changes that were made in the Greek by later Gospels, the question then doesn't go away. Where do you go? What, what you see, you may interpret you Mark copy. chapter that's ten differently. But Matthew changed the words of Jesus You're to remove me, the, the denial that I'm he was still, so divine. Don't push me, please. I didn't touch and the question you. is, why then did Matthew do that? And many scholars, again, this is not a proof thing, like a, 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 like a, a scientific experiment, a chemistry experiment, yeah. that I can prove well, to you by, to by, 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 by a scientific experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the question is, 
once, once, once you get what the, 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 the copying, to explain using, why a gospel writers change the words of Jesus. And for me, I find it most plausible that Matthew, uh, I, I, I can't prove this, but it okay, seems so a very plausible definition. So I uh, have to believe you. That, um, that the reason why Matthew changed the word Jesus was because he was embarrassed by Jesus' denial of his divinity. And at the end of the first century, okay. in Matthew's community, talk about communities, where Jesus was believed to be divine in some sense, this was not a belief that you could have Jesus espousing. So they just simply changed what Jesus said in Mark. Lies. So that's a very plausible explanation. That you may reject that, I, I find it very plausible. But you have, uh, reasonably, you have to offer an explanation that is that makes you that is consistent one, with all with all the observations that we have made so far. And I've not heard an explanation that can explain why Matthew changed the words of Jesus. Well, that is consistent with what he actually did, removing Jesus denying that he is divine and making him not say that. Why would Matthew do it? That's my question. Well, so and the, and the other thing, and the second thing is this. Christians love quoting from the Gospel of John, yeah. understandably. Jesus says amazing things. I am the light of the world. Before oh, Abraham was, God. I am. Yeah. I am the resurrection be, be, be and the light. And as well. Endlessly, all these amazing I am statements. Ego emi in Greek. And, it, and it's fascinating because it looks like, uh, some many scholars would say he's taken the divine name when it, before Abraham was, yeah. I am, in Greek. It says, say that. The problem is this, okay? Jesus went around saying these things, according to John, in public, all over the place, to everyone, his disciples, to the, uh, the, the, the unfriendly Jews, everyone, I am this, I am that. But nowhere, no other gospel, no other source we, ha we have ever records Jesus saying any of these things. In Mark, so our earliest gospel, Jesus never says, I am the light of the world. Yes, in Matthew, he never says, again, I am the resurrection of the light. In Luke, he never says, before okay. Abraham was, I am. And the in begotten Q, son as and, well. Uh, yeah, and Q, which so is also a very early source, uh, which is a uh, very so early source. In the Q source, it. Jesus never speaks like that. In the other two other sources well, called M and source. L, Jesus never speaks like this. So we have to come. If Jesus, Luke says in his prologue, uh, Dear Theophilus, I give you an ordinary account of all the things that have happened amongst yeah. us. So you may know the truth of what you have believed. He's giving a biography of Jesus. Yep. Chapter after chapter yep. after chapter. Yep. He never has Jesus speak like this. He never says, I am the light of the world. So how do we account so for this? In fact? Luke 1, according to the scholars, says but, but the consensus is that her, John that puts the word, John's the gospel Lord. is a, so uh, of God. a, so again, a, a his beliefs about Luke, Jesus being the light of the world. So he puts those words on Jesus' lips and has him say, I am the light of the world. Not that Jesus actually said any of these things. How can you it's what you this? believe about these things. Because so top scholars at King's College, who are priests, so people I know, it? have argued this, that th these are confessional documents. He, so John would say, I believe Jesus is the light of the world, and he puts these words on the lips of Jesus. Because they're not there in the earlier sources. If Jesus, the problem is this, if Jesus went around talking like this, why did no one ever record exactly. Jesus talking like this because until the end the of the first century, in the very last gospel, things. which is a highly interpreted, creative the way, the belief John, about Jesus. Okay. Okay. I, I, That's I, I, the challenge. And I've never heard any Christian ever years. respond to this. Well, my ever. Response, yeah. response to this, so, which yeah. is a good point, yeah. you made it very clear that John's gospel came later and made Jesus God. No, that's not true. I'm From saying that the words, words he these made sayings, him divine, but, yeah, why the these sayings only found in one gospel, the most yeah. uh, juicy, because highest historical statements, where he claims divinity. Mark knows nothing about this, neither does Luke, neither does Matthew, neither does Q, neither does M. All of our sources, no one ever records Jesus talking like this. But lo and behold, at the end of the first century, suddenly, all of these statements, Jesus walks around talking about this all the time. See, it doesn't, the, the best explanation is that these words have been creatively added and put on the lips of Jesus. No. He never actually said yeah, that. No, no. And that, in my experience, when I was a Christian and I discovered this, you it Christian, shook my Paul. faith as a Christian. A Christian. And I went from commentary to commentary to commentary, <laughs> trying to find some way out of this problem. Did you read it was a problem for me then. Why did oh, so why is John the only thoughts, one ever to record these public statements? And I can't, and everyone's telling me, all these scholars were, were saying in their books, because John puts these so words on the mouth of Jesus. They all it. say it, so because historically it makes no sense. Right. it makes no sense. So, okay, 
that's challenging having this person shot no, no, in my ear. Yeah, no, by the way, by the way. I took you like my case to you. Yeah, thank, you for, yeah. thank you for listening. You, yeah. listening. Yeah. you see, the problem is. I'm a Christian. Sorry? The, the, the problem is. He's a scholar. No, no he's not a scholar. I'm not a scholar. He, he, I, he's, he, he's, why do people say this? He studied but, his theology and he knows what he yeah. This guy was taken to shreds by Muhammad Hijab Ultimately, yeah. when he last spoke. Yeah, but by the way, but the guy doesn't even know his own religion. Listen, listen. Can I, can you, I, I want to ask you a question. Yes. There's something for me. I need to answer him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I want to, I want to, your breath stinks. Just get, get I need to answer you. All right. So, so, okay, now here. You know, the, the, the issue is, there is one, one question here. Now, now John, John so, Paul, is, right is someone right. who you said copied from Mark, correct? Yes. Now, now the problem is, the problem is, from my understanding, that, that John is the one who, uh, who could be the eyewitness of Jesus, could be one of those ones. Because we don't know, there is, a, there is kind of ambiguity, again, about the, 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 who's John. Was, the problem remains that he, he has an account of Jesus' life which is so radically different from any other account that you have to choose, historians have had to choose, do you go with the earliest gospel and the earliest evidence, which has Jesus as a prophet, as a messiah, as a miracle worker, as an exorcist, as a man who healed the sick, all of these things, which are all in the Quran as well, or do you go with John, who has Jesus say, I am the light of the world, but only John ever has this. No earlier eyewitness, alleged eyewitness, ever has Jesus speak like this. You have to choose which is his history. Jesus couldn't be go, go around and be like the Jesus of Mark well, and the Jesus of John. You have to choose. They and can't be both. Actually, everyone has chosen Mark and rejected John when it comes to real testimony about who Jesus really Prove was. That. That's that the consensus. Because that's what so all the scholars say. So if we go to Matthew, yeah. there's fragments of Matthew. In Magda University in Oxford. And in, and in that manuscript, there is in Greek, and it says, O Kyrios, which means the Lord, not a Lord, the Lord. Which, which verse is this? I don't know the verse. Ah, that, that, would help, that would help to know which well, verse is fragment, fragment, there, fragment, there are 28 yeah, yeah. chapters in Matthew. I need yeah, to know which yeah. one is actually it's in. Matthew University. John, I think it's John Staten's so okay. book. Okay. Well, well, uh, we, we need to know precisely but which what I, chapter. What I, what I, where I go is, we don't believe, like Roman Catholic, uh, Protestants, we don't believe sola scriptura. We don't believe in just what the Bible is, that is it. We agree the Bible. But there is who compiled that Bible, what tradition was there, how do we interpret everything? This is very big. You've interpreted that, oh, they've taken it out of there, they mean this or they mean that. But there's, there's more to it than that. There's more. You have to, we, we don't go just that. If there's, if there's, if there's an issue in there, like these issues you're saying, yeah. and be honest, Paul, uh, well, no, you are honest, I apologise, I don't mean you're not. No, you are honest, you're okay. a good man, okay. but you, you haven't, when you changed from being a Roman Catholic, you didn't really go to the, not even the scholars, the, the church, the, the, the Orthodox Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church. Actually, I became a Catholic whilst I was... Uh, a, 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 a student of the Bible at university, yeah. studying yeah. historical yeah. theology, mm. uh, the church, so the scriptures, all, right? everything uh, that you're talking about. I, I was studying that yeah. academically, yeah. you know, and at that point I, I entered into uh, uh, the Catholic Church. I didn't know anything about Islam yeah. at that point. Yeah. It was only uh, later that I discovered Islam. Yeah. Um, so I was intensely aware of these things you were talking about, but from an academic point of view. Um, but but, but, but I, I found remarkably in, in, in my studies, for what it's worth, that the Jesus of the Quran bears a remarkable similarity to the Jesus of history that historians talk about. In terms of what he believed, what he taught, his relationship with God and so on, what the Quran says is actually uh, pretty much confirmed in the generality with what uh, historians have seen. That this convergence between history and Islam is truly remarkable and deserves a lot more people talking about it than they are in the academic yeah. world. I'm very happy to talk about it because I think it's a really fascinating subject. Yeah, course, that if you look into history and you look at the Quran, you will notice a lot of parallels. You won't find it in Christianity, if you start off from the Trinity, incarnation, uh, Jesus' death as a 
sin offering for your sins. You will not find that in the Quran, and you will not find it in history either, in my view. It, 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 uh, that's my that's my response. But you didn't know because my question. You didn't go. You didn't turn to Eastern Orthodox. No, no, hang on. I did read about Orthodoxy. I remember uh, Timothy. What where is it? Timothy where the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Orthodox bishop. He's written a beautiful book called on Introduction to Orthodoxy. I read that twice. I took Orthodoxy very seriously. So I understand where you're coming from. But, it's, it's uh, but, very important but, but, but when it comes to these issues, it doesn't really matter if you're Orthodox well, it's or Catholic, like this. It's because like this. the issues yeah. remain the same. They don't change. If, so the prophet, your prophet, yeah. in Saudi Arabia, wasn't it? Was in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it was only, it was only recently. No, in uh, the Arab Peninsula. Medina, in the Arab Peninsula. Yes. It's called the Arab Peninsula. That community there, and those years of tradition and teaching and interpreting correctly, what does this mean? What does this mean? Passed down, yeah? And you had Isnad, yeah? You have Isnad as well. Now imagine now, me, I'm listening to some Western scholars. Now, oh, they criticize this, they say this, they say that. Yes. I won't listen to that. I have to listen to what your Good. people say at the time in the community and what was carried on. Yes, and that's this is true. very important. And this is what I'm saying about orthodoxy. You have to look at what they interpret. Early Muslim Christian dialogue, there wasn't any question of. Uh, oh, they took uh, this oh, and they oh, did this and they did that. But what they did, respectfully, they do say, oh, the books were corrupted. On one side, I'm not, I don't want to, but it says, ah, oh, the people, refer to the people of the book. Then the Muslim says, the, the Bible is corrupted. But then where, where produce what, what, how do you know? You know, the, you've, you've rejected 70%. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, all these I, Christians I, I and Jews were wrong. I have, I have a basic it's similarity a with the Orthodox, but ha having studied it a little bit, not as much as I'd like. But the point is this, and you're not, I don't think you, uh, no, you haven't addressed go on, it. Go on, go on. John has Jesus going around saying some incredible things. I am the light of the world, and call the resurrection, makes an endless statement. Well, right, They're only right, found in right, one right, gospel in the entire that Bible. Doesn't mean you if say it. Indeed. But if Jesus did go around talking like that, which John claims he did, why does no other earlier gospel ever record him talking like that? Because John, Luke, as I've already said, tells dear Theophilus in his prologue that he is setting out an orderly account of all these things. That he may know the truth about Jesus, yeah. Paul, and yet he admits script. all of this. He so does Matthew, finish. so does Mark, <laughs> so does Q, <laughs> so does M, so does L. Now, this is the problem. See, simply citing the Orthodox Fathers who came much later on is not going to address this because this is a first century issue. The Orthodox Fathers didn't exist then. This is before all that. So we have to look historically at our sources. And when we compare them, they throw out these kinds of questions. They're not here from my head. They come from professors at Oxford and Cambridge and Harvard. All of these people talk about this. And the standard answer is that John is a highly creative frankly, no, fictionalized account of the teaching of Jesus. The earlier sources are more historically reliable. And the earlier you get, okay, this well, is amazing for Muslims, the earliest, the earlier yeah, you get, the more Islamic right, Jesus so seems. He no, seems like a Muslim in that he prostrates way. before God. For example, he speaks George. like, he's teaching about the mercy of God, yeah. but he's Islamic. Yeah. And, as well, and as well he's telling Islamic the people, and as well educating the people that he's going to his father and your father, my God and your God, meaning yeah, yeah, yeah. he turns to him. So he supplicated to him. He was Relying, he was relying on the he was relying on the on, on the on the God rather than to say rather than relying on himself. If he was divine, which means it should be his own. We can own go through. Uh, this is an exercise we can do. We can look at the Je teaching of Jesus even in the earlier Gospels and compare it with the teaching of You're Islam, right. whether it be on salvation, the concept of God, forgiveness of sins, the nature of God, all of these issues, we can go, we can compare it. And I have found that on every count, what Jesus said is what Islam teaches. In a, in a, in a, in a, Jew, in a Jewish context, of course, but nevertheless, essentially it's the same. I do not find that when I look at the Orthodox Church and what they teach about salvation, about sins, that's not what I find on the lips of Jesus, and it's not what I find in the Quran. So I have to choose. Okay. Who do I follow, Jesus or do I follow the Orthodox okay. Church? And I, as a Muslim, choose to follow Jesus because only by following Jesus can I be a Muslim. And this is how it is. Let me respond. Yes, yes. Two things to mind. Where in the Bible, what, 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 what uh, gospel did he say? When they picked up, he says, "Who is this? John, I am." John. And he says, "I am." John. Yeah. These are all in John. These okay. juicy stuff are all Where in John. Where does it say in the
the Bible, uh, it says, there are many things said and done, but the whole world won't get a fit John. Is it John? Yep, keep going. You see, you, you want to keep coming back to John all the time because it's yeah, the yeah. one that gives you your beliefs. Okay. If we put John aside, so the, the saying, latest one, and come to the earlier evidence, yeah. there you will find a Jewish Jesus who is remarkably Islamic in his teaching. Okay, so these things what John said. So you're saying because they're not said in the other Gospels, it's... No, I'm what saying you have to By the way, can, you can we move? Because this guy no, no, is no, keep no, hackling us. Right keep hackling us. So George, we can't... We can, because the issue is... Yeah, the issue is if we keep... Because he tried... What he tried... No, no, he, listen, you know, right people here has right attention here. secret. So we can move. I'm looking forward to your response. We can Because we wanted to hear you. We wanted to hear about you. You've picked out this about John. But then what do you do with all the... But I'm not picking up on it. This is something that your own, that your Christian scholars have been not saying this for over a century. Not, yeah, not even, like even some of your scholars. Not not like no, no, there, there are. Who, who, who? Like, people like uh, Zizoulas at the King's College in London. Uh, he's an okay, academic there. He's what, an orthodox, a Greek or, I forget if he's Greek, Greek or Russian. Says he's what? an orthodox theologian says, says who, who understands this. So yeah, it's not just everyone else apart from you. Let me just say. So what do you do with... For example, you've, you've, you've said this, yeah? There are things in the other Gospels, but let me just say, what do we do with, for example, all the prophecies of the Old Testament about the Messiah, where he's going to be born, how he's going to be born, how he's going to die, how he's going to, be, he's going to be crucified, he's going to resurrect. What do you do with all these, especially in Daniel, when he even says when he's going to be born? Let me, let me, let me finish up. Thank you, sorry. So what do we do with all these prophecies? What do we do with the resurrection? You know, what do we do with the resurrection? And people just died martyr's death. And what do we do with the holy tradition that was passed down by the early church? Now we're talking about the early church, I'm talking about. The same churches that are there now in Jerusalem and just about in Gaza and all these places. Yes. But these are churches where the it's Jews... It's good to remember, by the way, that Palestinians, uh, well, some of them are Christians well, as well. Course. They're also being ethnically cleansed oh, no. by the Zionists. It's not oh, no. just yeah, uh, Muslims. Not just Muslims, it's yeah. Christians. I, I saw a, a Christian pastor, a, a Palestinian, uh, who, who was speaking the truth about the genocide happening. So you need to remember, it's Christians yes. and... Uh, Muslims, and Muslims, Palestinians, yeah. who have been. So thank you for mentioning Gaza. And did you because did you, did you hear about the? the thank you for mentioning Gaza. Did you uh, hear about? Did you see the Orthodox Christian priest, the old man, when the uh, Muslims said uh, when he said that they're, they're going to bomb our uh, minaret? Is yes. it minaret? I will go up there and pray for you. Uh, no. wow. Did you hear that bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I will tell you something in Jordan, but, in but, Jordan and Palestine. We have a very unique relationship between Muslims and Christians. Very unique relationship. Yes. And I will tell you something from my experience. I came from a city called Karaka, I told you earlier, which we have, which we have as well early, which we have uh, like an old church there. We have still a Christian minority living there for centuries, even throughout the Islamic yes. history. Yes. Now, you know, the amazing thing, during the month of Ramadan, yeah? yeah. You, do, you find those Christians who live there because they're neighbors to the Muslims. Yes. So they, will, they don't allow their children to have food in the street. They will call their children to, to feed inside yes. and then to go to play with the children. This is how much it is. And yes. during, as well, in that area, the same area, you'll find as in Muslims, because we know that the people, the, the Christian, the Orthodox, they observe the Lent, yeah? Yes. So they don't cook even meat in the area. Because their neighbors are Christian, this how much, this so how much like they live. Brothers. Yeah, that's that's how much the they, they respect. Involved. They respect and, each other. And this about Gaza and all the bombings and all that's politics. Yeah. It's a complicated well, thing. I don't, I don't want to say about that. Yeah, yeah. But all I yeah. want to say is so the, your point about the Old Testament prophecies is a good point. So the uh, early I, Jews, I, I, I can the, respond. Yeah, if you the want. first yeah. Christians were Jews. Yeah. The first island mm -hmm. to become Christian was Cyprus. Okay. My parents from. Okay. Them churches never change. So the, the, when they went in the homes and then they start the church and then they set up the church, this was right from the very beginning. So what about all this community and all this? There was no uh, issue about all that. Although, 
with respect, yes, of course, there were issues with... Uh, you, had to, you needed Athanasius to come in and clear up to protect the truth. But these yes. are very complex things, you know. You're going to go too deep and we need to go... It's not just Westerners. We don't go to Western scholars. We go what is passed down in the traditions, you know. Yeah. This is other. Well, well, let me ask you something. No, talk about traditions. I think you're on this very point uh, where, where, Paul, where, where Paul actually receives traditions and, and about these Old Testament prophecies. And I think yeah. this is a really good example. That's what I was yeah, Googling just said. Good, good. So for, in Paul's uh, first letter of the Corinthians, chapter 15, uh, this is the NIV, the Standard Evangelical Translation. It's, it's the same in all the translations. He says this, For I received, this is, in Greek it's paradosis, you, you know Greek, so this means, this means uh, tradition. Uh, so yeah, 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 but what I received, I pass on to you, the Corinthians, as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Yes. Now, I'll leave it there because these are the points where he references the scriptures, is what you're yeah. talking about, prophecies. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I, I've read the, the, the Jewish Bible cover to cover, uh, and I, I've never come across any prophecy in the, Jew, in the, in the Jewish Bible where it says the Messiah would die for sins, and then on the third day, the Messiah will be raised from the dead. I've literally never found it anywhere in the Bible, and neither, in my experience, has anyone else. What's that one with Jonah? That, by the way, that was, that was in the beginning of our discussion. I mentioned to him, in the Messiah, I told him the Messiah in the Old Testament, there is no any way, even kind of any enticing towards that the Messiah is God. There is no way talking about the Messiah. They talk about the Messiah is a savior, savior, a human figure. Someone is going to save the people. Someone is going to people. They will look up to him to be followed. But there is no way about the Messiah talking about him that he is God or to be worshipped. That's something which is adding to this. So coming back to Jonah, you see, Jonah is, is a story or a parable even about a, a guy who was sent to be told to go preach to the Ninevites, got swallowed by a whale that he preached, the Ninevites repented, etc. Nowhere, nowhere in that, and I'll get quite strict on this, do, do, does, does Jonah mention a Messiah who would die and on the third day be rose again from the dead? He never mentions that in Jonah. Jonah has nothing to do with this subject at all. You would have to read Jonah in a highly allegorical, symbolic way, which, which some people call Eisegesis. This is actually a joke. Uh, technically, eisegesis is the opposite of exegesis. Eisegesis sounds like I see Jesus. Because what Christians often do, they, they see Jesus all over the Old Testament. But they read him into the text. They don't read him out of the text. Which is what exegesis, which is what historians do. I'm trying to practice history here. Jonah has nothing to do with uh, the Messiah dying and rising from the dead. But you can have your highly symbolic allegorical. The problem with that is... You can argue anything. I yeah. can say that Muhammad is mentioned all over the, well, show over me. the Old Testament. Show it to me. Because in my highly show allegorical interpretation, yeah, he's on every page of the Bible. No, so he's not, show and I'm not me. arguing that. No, but it. if I use that methodology, well, I could, I could anyway. argue anything, anything I want. Anything. And that's why I don't uh, adopt that methodology. Good point. All right. So uh, these point, things are very detailed, very... You have to get into exactly sites, uh, certain passages, why they interpreted the way they are, and it's a very long discussion, these things. But you raise very good points. But may I ask you something else now? What about Jonah? How, how do you respond to that? About Because you mentioned Jonah. So yeah, how did Jonah that, reference... Uh, uh, reference uh, that was a prophecy about yeah, yeah, Jesus uh, yeah, being crucified and raising up. But in days. Jonah? Yeah. I've never read... I've read Jonah dozens of times. I've never come across it. Which, where does it say in Jonah? Oh, it's know. not talking about Jesus. It's talking about oh. Jonah the prophet talking it's to like Nineveh. It's like of what's happening. It's not what's really, going to happen. With, with respect, but, okay. it's not in Jonah at all. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can see because I, I can't. Okay. I, I'm not wise enough to explain well, no, all no, that. No, no, no. There was no mental. But, you know, if I just go back to read the podcast of Jay Dyer about Continuity. He's talked to Jay Dyer before, and Jay Dyer told me. Uh, I don't think I have, no. Yeah. It's very interesting to look at that as well, uh, just to see his. Uh, and on the okay. Trinity, and on the Trinity. Sorry, I'm just saying, because I'm not as articulate. Jay Dyer is Orthodox Christians, you know. If you look at his. Again, uh, discussing with the Muslims Finally. about we're, the we're Trinity. Alhamdulillah, we're free of the, uh, the shaitan. About, <laughs> about the Trinity. Stand, stand here, yeah. Oh, please, oh, brothers, yeah, excellent. Just stand just stand 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 stay there, please. Thank you. I would love to, whenever you do, please come up to me and tell me what you think of Jay Dyer's 
discussion about continuity. Continuity of what? Okay. Well, the priesthood, by, 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 the priesthood in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, by, 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 what the Jews had and how it was prophesied by, by, that the Gentiles okay. would take over and they will continue it. Who are those people? Okay. Is it the Protestants? Yeah. Is it the Roman Catholics? Yeah. Is it yeah. the yeah. Muslims? Yeah. Or is it the yeah. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. Please do look at that if you can. No, no, and also no, 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 his point about the Trinity. I'm not saying there's no continuity about anything. Listen, listen. I'm not saying there's no continuity about these things. I'm saying when it comes to who Jesus was, what he taught, and the prophecies that you allege of Jesus' death and resurrection. I've honestly never found any prophecy anywhere in the Old Testament that speaks of the Messiah dying and rising uh, from the dead on the third day. Literally never found it. And I've read every single word of the Old Testament. I've never found it. What do you think, what do you think the Jews would do? What do you think the Jews would do to Jesus if he claimed he was God? Well, he wouldn't have claimed because no human being uh, in his right mind no, claimed to be God. And he didn't claim to be God in our early sources. Why did they crucify him? The Romans, according to the Gospels, the Romans crucified him for sedition. He, he was a, seen as a troublemaker. The Romans were very crucifixion happy. They crucified lots of people. Any troublemakers, they picked them up and crucified them. They weren't particularly fussy about Jewish theology. Roman soldiers didn't care about theology, yeah. they did care about potential troublemakers. And a guy who went around seemingly claiming to be the Messiah, and in Jewish tradition, a Messiah was a king like David, a human warrior. And if you've got a guy who's apparently currently claiming to be a warrior under Roman occupation, yeah. what, are the, what would the Zionists do today? You, know, they, you bomb them, you kill them, and they execute them. That was just, that's the motive. The motive is clear. They weren't concerned with Christology and tradition and priests. But and didn't, Jewish didn't, theology. Didn't, didn't, he about that. didn't Jesus blaspheme? They did, he didn't blaspheme. When he so said, I am? No, the I am statements are all in John. All and in John. How many times do I have to say yeah, this? Yeah, I know that, and we can't uh, accept that. Well, you have to account for why Jesus speaks the way listen, he does if, in John. If, if there is someone, if there is someone. else in the earlier Gospels. Listen. You have to choose historically. Because it wasn't mentioned which, anywhere else, no, does that mean... Think historically yes. for a second. Does Jesus go around talking like the Jesus of Mark or like yes, John? Yes, he does. He can't do both because neither go. says he does both. Mark 1? Mark, Mark, Mark 1 is done. not Jesus speaking. That's Mark himself well, talking. Well, I mean, the Mark actual words on Jesus' lips you know, in John's you know, Gospel are not found in Matthew, Luke, uh, or, or Mark, or Q, or M, or L, or all when, of our sources. When, when, he said, when, when, when Shaitan was tempting God, uh, Jesus, he said, don't tempt your God. Don't tempt God. Well, which passage is it? Mark or in Luke? Or in Matthew or Luke? I don't know. Wait, he said, we need to look at the details. Because he doesn't quite say that if you look at the details. So you have to answer why Jesus denies he was divine in Mark 10. Matthew has the same passage. He changes the words of Jesus to remove that problem. These details, the devil is in the details. The devil's in the details where the later gospel writers change the words of Jesus. And the devil's involved in that, I think, because you're moving away from the real historical. Jesus, the Islamic Jesus, into the later Christian understanding, which I'll is pick, not his history. I'll pick something up. Come this way behind. So I, think Jesus. Going around circle, I think we're going around in circles. So I think yeah, we're, yeah. We're going over by the way, by the way, you know, listen, I'll tell you something, oh, George. Yeah, George, yeah, yeah. We are going what you are saying, what you, what you are saying to you from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, absolute pleasure. I'm not, I'm by the way, what, what no, you are I'm saying to you. Either. It's been great talking to you. I really, I really I appreciate I your talking yeah. to you. is always a pleasure. Yeah, and, and well, I'm glad that you came. Jazakallah khair, brother Paul. And as well, and as well, uh, thank you as well for this beautiful and fruitful full discussion we want a lot of these discussions and again what we are saying to you again think about when john when john was was copying from mark why did he add certain things that's the thing which you need to ponder and then read about it in a holistic way and then after that we will all right god bless you all right thank you thank you so much yeah thank you anyway thank you my brothers and sisters may allah rod you bless you all it was actually a fruitful discussion it was and alhamdulillah i, I wish i wish that we don't have hacklers here but you know Shaitan hates us to hear the truth that's how it is alhamdulillah anyway. but alhamdulillah always the truth inshallah it will come eventually regardless and the good thing alhamdulillah we had a very good good discussion i ask allah azawajal to increase us all in knowledge and iman and i ask allah to guide our brother john Inshallah, hopefully in the future, he will read more. But George, listen, I will tell you something. If, it, if Islam made sense to you at any point, yeah? Say again? If Islam makes sense to you at any point in your life, don't have the arrogance and the pride not to follow it. I don't know. I, I, look, 
I follow see? what God said. What Good. Jesus. That's fine. I love your neighbor. So I love everybody. I respect everybody. And, and we love the guidance and for you. We, and I, I will love the you, guidance to yeah, come to you. Either you're misled or I'm misled. Okay. One of us is so the truth. We have to pray for if, the, if the truth came to us, if the truth came to you, there is two factors. The devil plus our arrogance and pride not to accept it. Yes. So that's why we should we should seek refuge in God from the devil. Yes. Plus as well, we should seek refuge from God as well. Uh, in God from what? From our own desire and our own pride and arrogance. Yes. yes. So the, the, the truth to be followed regardless. Exactly. So if you find the truth, George, follow it. Absolutely. Yeah? And take We've it from there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you've, All right. You've been coming in every week. Every Thank you. Week, Thank you. You have discuss, different discussion with different people. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. They give you the same answer. Yeah. 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 You don't accept yeah. it. Finish. No. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. I know. Thank you, my brother. Allah Lord, you have blessed you. Allah, my brother. Assalamu alaikum.